Hello children, welcome to today's class. In today's class, you are going to learn unit 13 in biology, structural organization of animals. In today's class, you are going to learn about the rabbit, the external and the internal morphology of the rabbit. Let us understand the taxonomic position of rabbit. The scientific name is Oryctolagus cuniculus. It is written in italics. The taxonomic position is based on the following divisions. Phylum, Chordata. Subphylum, Vertebrata. Class, Mammalia. Mammalia means they are all mammals because the rabbit is a vertebrate. Order, Lagomorpha, genus, Oryctolagus and the species is Cuniculus. So, genus plus the species gives you the scientific name of rabbit Oryctolagus Cuniculus. Understand the external morphology of rabbit. External morphology means the external appearance. Most of you, I think all of you have seen one rabbit, but still on the screen the picture of a rabbit is being displayed. The same picture is there in your textbook figure 13.5, open to 13.5. On top we see the ears, below that the eyes, mouth, above the mouth there is a small slit, the nostril which is not shown upper arm, forearm, limbs. You see the digits, then the foot, tail, thigh, trunk and the neck. Rabbit, Oryctolagus cuniculus, habit. What do you mean by habit? Habit means the external appearance. The shape of the rabbit is elongated and cylindrical. The body shape is elongated means it is long and cylindrical means it is round in shape. The size of the rabbit both male and female grow up to 45 centimeters in length and they weigh up to 2 to 2.5 kgs. The color of the rabbit is it is either fully white or fully black or black and white and the body is covered with fur. The habitat, habitat means the place or the home where the rabbit lives. Rabbits are gentle and timid animals. Gentle means they are very shy. Timid means they are very sensitive. They get scared very fast. A small sound, they will start running. Timid. They show leaping movements. How do they move around? They show leaping movements. They jump and they try to move and they live in burrows. What is a burrow? Burrow is a hole made by the rabbit in loose soil. Rabbits are distributed throughout the world. Rabbits are herbivorous animals. That is, they eat grass, turnips, carrots and lettuce. And the most interesting feature of the rabbit is they move in groups. So, they are called as gregarious animals. Now, let us understand the body division of the rabbit. The rabbit's body is divided into head. The head is ovoid. Ovoid means it is oval shape. At the same time, it is flat and it bears a truncate snout. Truncate, it is a U-pin. The mouth area is like a U-pin. It contains the mouth, external nas, that is the nose, eyes, ears and the vibrisse. Vibrisse means on the upper lip there are hair like projection like a mush. It is not exactly a mush, a hair like projection which can also be called as whiskers. The mouth of the rabbit is transverse slit bounded by upper and lower lips. The nostrils are just above the upper lip. There are two obliques openings called as the nostrils. The rabbit will breathe and smell with the help of the nostrils. Whiskers, just now I told you, whiskers is a tactile hair projected outwards on the upper lip. Eyes, 
eyes of the rabbit are on the sides of the head and the eyes have a large view. The rabbit can see it in a large long distance and cover a larger view with its eyes. Ears. A pair of large ears movable, its external ears outside on the top of the head. Then the head is now connected to the neck. The neck is connected with the trunk. The neck helps the rabbit to move its head on both the sides. The trunk is divided into two parts, anterior thorax and the posterior abdomen. In females, there are four or five teeth or nipples are present on the ventral surface between the thorax and the abdomen. What are teeth or nipples? When the young one is born, female rabbit is able to nourish the young rabbit from the nipples. The nipples are connected to the mammary glands. On the ventral side, that is the front side, there is a slit like vulva is also present. The trunk bears two pairs of pentadactyl limbs, that is four limbs. The front limbs, the four limbs are shorter than the hind limbs. All the four limbs are having digits which bears claws. The anus is present at the posterior end. Posterior means at the back side end of the abdomen below the tail. Below the tail is the anus. Now, what is the function of the anus? The function of the anus is to which is connected to the rectum and gives out all the waste excretory products are thrown out of the body from the anus. In male, the penis is present in the ventral side of the anus. Male has a pair of testes enclosed in the scrotal sac. The scrotal sac and the testes prepares the uh, sperm, the reproductive fluid for the rabbit. The tail is short and the tail gives signals to other rabbits in event of danger. Integument. Integument means the skin. I already told you the skin of the rabbit is covered with hair which is like fur. Fur means when you touch a teddy bear, how soft the teddy bear is like that the hair of the rabbit is. The skin has got the claws, nails, sweat glands from which the sweat is released. All mammals will sweat and rabbit is also a mammal and the sebaceous glands, the sebaceous glands produce oil. The sweat glands and the sebaceous glands together maintains the body temperature of the rabbit and the mammary glands which are connected to the teeth which helps in the production or the secretion of milk and help in nourishment of the young ones. Now, let us see the internal morphology of the rabbit. The internal morphology consists of the we saw that the rabbit's body is divided into two parts. One the upper part the thorax and the other part is the abdomen. The thorax and the abdomen is divided by a membrane called as a diaphragm. Now, let us see the digestive system. Study the figure children on in your textbook or if you can see it on your screen well and good. Figure 13.6, the digestive system of the rabbit. You can see the stomach. Above the stomach, there is a tube uh, protruding outward, the esophagus tube. Now, this esophagus tube is connected to the mouth. Mouth from where the rabbit takes in the food goes into the buccal cavity and through the pharynx, it reaches the esophagus from there it goes into the stomach. From the stomach, there is one more tube coming out downwards, which is the intestinal tube. There are two intestines, small intestine and the large intestine. The small intestine and the large intestine at that junction, we see a circum. Circum is another tube which helps in digestion. The small intestine and the large intestine is connected to the colon, colon is connected to the rectum and the rectum in turn opens into the anus from where the waste or the excretory material is removed out. 
Now, look at the figure on top, you can see a red color, it is the liver, green color, gallbladder and the orange color is the pancreas, gallbladder, liver, pancreas, stomach and the intestine, they are having the digestive glands which secretes the digestive juices at the time of digestion and the other part is the elementary canal which starts from the mouth and ends in the anus. Now, we will see the parts, mouth. Mouth is a transverse slit. From here, the rabbit takes in the food. The mouth leads to the buccal cavity. In the buccal cavity, we see the muscular tongue and jaws with teeth. That is what the buccal cavity is. The buccal cavity leads to the esophagus through the pharynx. Esophagus opens into the stomach. Esophagus leads to the stomach, stomach leads to the small intestine and the large intestine. The most interesting feature here is the cecum. The cecum is a walled sac present at the junction of the small intestine and the large intestine. It contains bacteria that help in digestion of cellulose. What is cellulose? Cellulose means all the green color leaves the green vegetables which is the food of the rabbit. One part is digested in the stomach, another part gets digested in the intestine and the remaining part which goes into the cecum is digested with the help of bacteria which breaks down the cellulose and takes in the nutrients. Small intestine and large intestine leads to the colon and the rectum and opens into the anus. Now, the digestive glands, they are salivary gland. Where do you find the salivary gland? The pharynx secretes the salivary gland with the help of the tongue. Gastric gland, it is in the stomach secreting juices for digestion. Liver, pancreas, intestinal glands and these glands secrete the digestive juices which helps in the digestion. Now, a very important and very nice interesting feature of the rabbit is the dentition in rabbit. What is dentition means? Dental. When you have a problem in your teeth, who do we go to? We go to a dentist. So, the dental part of the rabbit. Rabbits show diphodont dentition. That means, the young ones have got the milk teeth and the adult rabbit has got permanent teeth. The teeth are hard and used to cut the rabbit when it is biting a turnip or the carrot with its teeth. It tears and grinds the food materials, the leaves has to be torn and it has to be crushed. There are four type teeth in the rabbit. The dental is called as the heterodont uh, types. One, the incisors represented by the letter capital I canines C, premolars P M and the molars M. Now, look at the uh, mouth of the rabbit. We saw that the rabbit is having two jaws, one upper jaw and another one the lower jaw. The upper jaw right in front, you can see in your textbook also, there are two incisor teeth in the upper jaw and only one in the lower jaw. Next last teeth the molars, three teeth in the upper jaw and three molar teeth in the lower jaw. The teeth before the molars is called as premolars. In the upper jaw there are three teeth and in the lower jaw two. So, the dental formula is derived as I 2 by 1. It is not a fraction children, 2 stands for the 2 incisor teeth in the upper jaw and one teeth in the lower jaw. Next C, C stands for canine. So, we do not see any canine teeth in the uh, dentition of the rabbit. So, upper jaw it is 0 and lower jaw also it is 0. Premolar, the upper jaw there are 3. So, on top you see 3 and the lower jaw 2. So, it is 3 by 2. Molars, upper jaw 3 and the lower jaw 3. 
Now, the dental formula is written as the upper jaw 2 0 3 3. The first 2 stands for the incisors, 0 for the canine, 3 for the premolar and last 3 for the molar teeth and down for the lower jaw 1 incisor teeth, no canine teeth. So, it is 0, 2 premolars and 3 molar teeth. So, 2 0 3 3 divided by 1 0 2 3 divided by because whenever you are reading the fractions this is how it is written, but it is not a division you do not have to do any divisions over here. We see that C is 0 by 0 means that the canine teeth are absent. Now, you see a long gap between the incisors and the premolars. The gap between the incisors and the premolar is called as diastema, a long gap. So, there is no teeth at all in that place. Then what is the function of that diastema? The diastema which helps in chewing and mastification of food the salivary glands the uh, rabbit is able to chew and cut keep on playing with the food in its mouth. Now, next is the thoracic cavity of the rabbit. When I explain the morphology I told you that the rabbit's body is divided into two parts the thoracic part and the abdomen part and a diaphragm in between divides the two the thoracic cavity and the abdomen cavity. Here the thoracic cage or the thoracic cavity is shown. I have drawn a circle in this diagram. What do you see? You see the spinal cord right on top, then down in the ventral side there is a sternum. The spinal cord and the sternum is connected with a set of bones which is called as the rib. This uh, area is also called as the rib cage. Now, the respiratory system, the rib cage consists of the respiratory system which is taking place with the help of lungs and the heart, the circulatory system. The lungs and the heart are very safely kept in the thoracic cavity. Now, look at the picture of the lungs of the rabbit. Right on top you can see the larynx, below that there is a spring like uh, tube which is called as the windpipe or the trachea, where the, the trachea or the windpipe is made with rings, each ring connected to the other. The trachea ends at the bronchi, bronchi divides into two parts and each bronchi goes into one separate lungs. Now, let us see the respiratory system. Respiration takes place by a pair of lungs. These lungs which are light and spongy tissue. The lungs are made are very light and they are made with spongy tissues. What do you mean by spongy? Have you seen the smiley ball that yellow color ball? Yeah, when you press it, it compresses and when you release it, it comes back to its same shape use a sponge to wipe the blackboard in the classroom. So, when you are pressing that sponge it compresses, its shape changes, but when you leave it again it comes back to its normal uh, shape. So, the lungs are enclosed in the thoracic cavity. It is bounded by a vertebral column on the dorsal side at the back side, sternum on the ventral side and ribs on either sides connects the vertebral column and the sternum. A diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity and the abdomen cavity. The abdomen part, what is the abdomen part now going to have? If the lungs and the heart is in the thoracic cavity, the abdomen cavity will have the digestive system and the urinogenital system. That is the excretory system and the reproductive system. Now, let us see how respiration takes place in the rabbit. Rabbits uh, breathe in air through the nostrils. Air enters through external nostrils and the nasal passage into the pharynx. Now, it has come up to the pharynx, the air has come. From the pharynx, the air passes through the glottis. Now, in the picture, the glottis is not shown, 
the glottis is a, a small part which is an epiglottis it is a membrane if you open your own mouth and look into the mirror you can see one small tongue like thing at the back which is always moving ok that is the glottis into the wind pipe or the trachea wind pipe is enlarged to form the voice box inside the larynx lies the vocal cord it is why when the vocal cord vibrates sound is produced. Now, the epiglottis prevents the entry of food into the wind pipe or the trachea. The epiglottis is a small little part which does not allow the food or water to enter into the wind pipe. As the name suggests wind pipe only air should go into that pipe. Trachea of wind pipe has two branches called the bronchi entering into each lung forming further branches called bronchioles which end in the alveoli. What does the alveoli do? It collects a large amount of air, they are small small air bags. Respiration takes place by inspiration, inspiration means taking in the oxygen which is an active process and expiration giving out carbon dioxide which is a passive process. Next organ in the thoracic cavity or in the thoracic cage is the circulatory system, blood circulation, blood alone circulates from the head to the toe. Now, look at the picture of the heart of the rabbit. The heart of the rabbit is shown here, uh, you can see the blue color tubes which are the veins and the red ones are the arteries, yes. The heart is in a shape of a fruit the pear. The heart is formed by blood, blood vessels and the heart is in the thoracic cavity. It is enclosed by pericardium a double layered membrane and kept safely in the thoracic cavity. Let us study the structure of the heart. The heart has got four chambers, two auricles and two ventricles. Follow the diagram children. The right and the left auricle separates by interauricular septum. It is a membrane which separates the right and the left auricle. The right and the left ventricle is separated by interventricular septum. So, the ventricle is separated by a membrane called as interventricular septum and the auricle by a interauricular septum. Now, the right auriculoventricular aperture, it is a small opening which connects. This is guarded by tricuspid valve, left auriculoventricular aperture. This is guarded by bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. The pulmonary artery and the iota are guarded by semilunar valves. The right auricle receives the deoxygenated blood from all the parts of the body. Deoxygenated means impure blood. The left auricle receives oxygenated blood from the pulmonary veins. The right ventricle carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygen. The left ventricle arises the iota which carries oxygenated blood to all the parts of the body. Next we will see the nervous system. The nervous system of the rabbit includes the central nervous system which consists of the brain and the spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system, 12 pairs of cranial nerves which are connects the brain and the spinal cord. It helps in coordination of the limbs. Autonomous nervous system, the sympathetic nerves controls glands like sweating etc. and the parasympathetic nerves controls activities of digestion, respiration, reproduction. Brain is located in the cranial cavity, cranial cavity means the skull. The brain is safely covered with three membranes called as meninges, outer dura mater which is very strong, middle arcanoid, inner pia mater, parts of the brain, four brain, a pair of olfactory lobes which gives sense of smell, 
cerebral hemisphere which controls the muscle function of the body and the diencephalon gives sensory signals like sleep, alertness, etc. The midbrain consists of the optic lobes, helps in visual input from the eyes related to memory. Hind brain consists of the cerebellum pons varoli, helps in dealing with facial expressions, sleep, swallowing, bladder control, sensation and the medulla oblongata which controls all the activities of the body with the spinal cord. Next is the urinogenital system comprises of the urinary or the excretory system and the genital system or the reproductive system. The urinary system or the excretory system. This the excretory system takes place with the help of a pair of kidneys dark red bean shaped in the abdominal cavity. There are several nephrons in the kidney. The function of the kidney is to separate nitrogenous waste from blood in the form of urea. Ureters arises from the kidney and enters the urinary bladder. From the urinary bladder a urethra comes out walled muscle duct and releases the urea. The reproductive system. Rabbit shows sexual dimorphism. That means the male and the female sex organs are separate. The male reproductive system, study the diagram children. It consists of a pair of testes, ovoid shape inside the scrotal sac in the abdominal cavity. Semi seminiferous tubules arise from the testes and leads into the epididymis. Vast difference is there in the urinary bladder which joins with the urethra. Urethra just below the urinary bladder runs backward and passes into the penis. There are three accessory glands, the prostrate gland, cowper's gland and the perineal gland which helps in the secretion from these glands help in reproduction. Female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries blue in color in the diagram inside the oviduct located in the abdominal cavity and connects to the fallopian tube which leads to the uterus. Uterus joins together to form the vagina. Urinogenital canal is formed by joining the urinary bladder and the vagina which opens into the vulva. There are two accessory glands for reproduction, Cowper's gland and the perineal gland. Evaluation, write the dental formula of rabbit. How is diastema formed in rabbit? What does CNS stand for? How does the rabbit respire? Explain the following systems with a neat diagram. Digestive system of the rabbit, respiratory system of the rabbit and the reproductive system of the rabbit. With this unit 13 structural organization of animals is completed. Wishing each one of you all the best. Do not waste your time. You are at home watching me on your television sets or on the mobile phone. Utilize this time. Once again you read the lesson. Thank you very much children.